Good day to everybody. Today I'll discuss about effect of poor health care on growth and productivity of a developing country such as Nigeria. What are the consequences? What are the effect of poor health care on the productivity and growth of a developing country? Don't forget after watching this video, please do subscribe, give thumbs up. That really helps. Disease and poor health care perhaps represent a great burden to affected individuals. While it is difficult to quantify the welfare losses to the individual of being severely ill can be significant, particularly in those developing regions such as Nigeria with limited social and healthcare security. Individual affecting or individual affected from such illness may be weak, unable to work or study, and generally unable to provide for children and other defendant, as the case may be. At a more aggregated level, however, it seems likely that a high disease burden may have an adverse impact on countries' productivity, growth, and ultimately economic development. Many studies have been done and some are going on to explain cross-country differences in economic growth and productivity that have typically suggested that education, third openness, savings, inflations, and the initial level of income are among the key explanatory variables. So therefore, I look at three distinct and specific factors affecting healthcare, particularly in developing countries such as Nigeria. Number one is malaria, which is common. Number two is malnutrition. Number three is waterborne diseases. There are some of the traits to health sector in developing world. If a disease has a fatal effect on, on individuals, then it will lower the amount of labor supply. However, in the vast majority of the cases, the very common diseases and illness in the developing world, such as undernourishment, malaria, and waterborne diseases, have non fatal consequences particularly on adults who participate on labor process, not child or infant. But affected individuals remain in the labor pools. Their productivity is severely impaired. Infectious diseases such as malaria, for instance, result in recurrent debilitating bouts of illness which prevent individuals from supplying their labor productivity. If a country has a high disease burden that has devastating implication, that has devastating implication on foreign and domestic investment, tourism and internal mobility of labor and land use. However, let us examine the implication that I stated earlier. The economic impact of malnutrition largely through its effect on the labor pools. Those suffering from malnutrition obtain pill weak and lacking in energy and are more susceptible to infection and other illness than those who receive minimum dietary energy requirement, that is balanced diet. Furthermore, nutrient deficiencies particularly in childhood, can retard physical and cognitive development and obtain undermined schooling due to absenteeism and early dropouts. Why did you expect the dropout to be roaming about in search of their daily needs? Some might become armed robbers, some might, may become burglars, and many more culprit act. In addition to its likely impact on aggregate labor productivity, 
poor health can also have other macroeconomic implications. A country experiencing widespread malnutrition or other form of ill health will find its national budget distorted. The increased demand on health care system will be reduced. And perhaps donor resources that may have been used to meet other needs will have to be diverted. Second factor is malaria. Malaria is one of the most problem and one of the most prevalent and challenging infectious diseases affecting developing countries, particularly Nigeria. In Nigeria, malaria is the leading cause of days, accounting of 192,294 deaths. Despite that, malaria is non fatal but results in frequent recurrent attacks that affect the productivity of labor supply. The incidence of malaria appears to be only a weak function of income. While communities can to an extent invest in anti-malaria protections such as bed net and also health care services to treat sufferers, the severity of malaria is determined mainly by climate and ecology. However, the eradication program started since 1940s and 1950s, but the focus basically on the control of mosquitoes and have been successful in some areas such as Mediterranean, but largely failed in Sub-Saharan Africa. In the later region, eradication efforts were hindered by the far higher human and mosquito carrying rates. The prevalence of mosquito species, particularly suited to malaria transmission and climate conditions that can allow all year round exposure. The most direct economic impact of malaria is in terms of reduced labor productivity. Hempel and Nigeria 1996 in their research indicate that a bout of known fatal malaria will typically last of 10 to 14 days, including 4 to 6 days of total incapacitation, with the remainder characterized by headaches, fatigue, and nausea. A mild sufferer will experience one or two bouts per year. The extent to which this lost labor time will reduce output depend on whether it coincides, for example, with the harvest time in agricultural areas. In common with malnutrition, malaria results in frequent absenteeism, particularly among school children, resulting in reduced accumulation of human capital and associated lost productivity in adult life. However, the economic impact of malaria extends beyond direct impact on labor product productivity. Malaria, a high malaria burden, is likely to increase labor turnover, resulting in increasing hiring and turn cost for reduced profitability for enterprises. Furthermore, a high malaria incidence within a particular area may reduce tourism, little otherwise profitable foreign and domestic investment and prevent the use of land and other natural resources. Number three factor is waterborne diseases. Lack of access to sanitation and particularly to safe water drinking remains a great risk to health in developing countries. It is a strong determinant of waterborne diarrhea and other diseases such as cholera, typhoid fever, dysenteries, as well as roundworm and guinea worm infections. In Nigeria, diarrhea account for, as, for an as estimated of 150,000 deaths annually, mainly among children under five years of age, due to unsafe water, poor sanitation, and hygiene practices as reported by UNICEF. The economic impact 
is not limited to absenteeism. However, the pattern affected may be too weak in such a way that to reduce the long-term ability of individuals to study or to work. In addition, other individuals such as parents or spouses are also affected as they need to attend to the sick individuals. In this respect, waterborne diseases are similar to malaria as the affected individual can become largely incapacitated and highly dependent on others. In conclusion, therefore it appears that poor health is a key factor in explaining the existence of persistent undevelopment in many regions, particularly in Nigeria. It has long been known that poverty and underdevelopment play a significant role in the prevalence of malnutrition. Lack of access to safe water and sanitation and the resultant proportion of waterborne diseases, and the general lack of medical services and preventive medicine. Therefore, with the above explanation, it shows that poor health has burden consequences on, a, on productivity and the development of a country. Thank you.